books for you know self help and yeah, self yeah, personal yeah. development and stuff. And they were sat there on my bookshelf and I wouldn't read them. Shelf help. Yeah. <laughs> and make a conscious decision mm. to start small. Yeah. yeah. Then once you once you have started small, Build it up. snowballs. Snowballs. Yeah. 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 Then then before you know it, you're at the top of the hill and the snowball's rolling down rather than you pushing it up. Absolutely. Welcome back to another video. I'm Maximilian. I help people empower their lives and I'm here with my good friend Jonah and we're going to spread some knowledge, spread some wisdom about things that we've done in the past that we most likely regret and something that you shouldn't worry about too much now or even just take action on it now. So I'm going to let Jonah introduce himself to you guys and enjoy this video. Absolutely cool. Thank you so much for having me, Max. Um, so as Max said, we're going to be talking about some stuff that we potentially regret from like school and which for us isn't very long ago really like we're 20 and 22 so it's really just you know a handful of years ago but to give you an idea of who I am and what I do now I run a marketing company um, I'm getting into um, the whole world of property as well to an extent that's something that's quite new but I've been running my own company now for the last three or four years um, I started my first company right out of secondary school when I was sort of 16 17 um, so it's been about three or four years I've been doing my own thing. And to give you a bit of uh, the backstory that we'll go into a bit deeper in the video, I was kicked out of secondary school essentially, and I was kicked out of secondary school and I dropped out of college because I had all this um, built up frustrations, just, just within myself, about education system, life in general. And the only thing that I really had to latch onto was this idea of one day wanting to run my own business. And so that's what really drove me to obviously start doing what I'm doing now, um, which now is incredible and really, really, really cool. But I think one of the things that isn't touched on all the time is where people come from, like the, the story before mm -hmm. that, like what, what is today, you know, hasn't always been there, um, hasn't always been a thing. Like I haven't always been in business. I've got no background in business. My family's got no background in business. I wasn't, you know, you know, naturally a business person um, it's all stuff that I've learned very much the hard way and hasn't hasn't come naturally mm, um, mm. so it's been a bit of a, a fun ride but uh, yeah the story before that is one that hopefully we can touch on today yeah yeah definitely and it's, it's something that we like like we said as both of us have very similar had very similar outlooks on school on life in general and now we have again have very similar out, uh, outlooks on life and um, just just life in general yeah, and we both agreed that we probably wasted a lot of our school life because we Wanted to be cool or we wanted to do something to impress someone or yeah. we just class clown. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that was me. <laughs> <laughs> And Essentially what we want to do is we want to whether you're 14 watching this whether you're 40 watching this This could be at a workplace. This could be at school. It could be wherever you are is taking opportunities when the opportunities are there and not always it doesn't it doesn't always have to be huge opportunity for you to take like something small can start to something great and i'm sure that's probably exactly how you started you didn't Absolutely. expect it to be where no. you are now no not at all and the biggest things it's, it's one of my favorite quotes is you don't have to see the whole staircase to take the first step and that's very true i love that yeah i've not heard that before yeah oh it's one of my favorite i believe it's martin luther king cool. and it's so true because you don't need to, like with anything, you can't run before you can walk. And yeah. that, sort, that sort of understanding. We were, we were talking about that earlier, weren't we? Yeah. Just like, you know, a lot of people, you're still learning to tie your shoelaces. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, regardless of whether or not you can run or walk, you know, you need to start by <laughs> putting your shoes on and tying your laces before that. So, yeah. um, you know, everyone does, you know, start somewhere and, you know, where you start really is quite irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. Mm, definitely, you shouldn't definitely. get too caught up on. The fact that like, maybe you've struggled in school or maybe you've failed school, like I personally was kicked out of school, I then dropped out of college, and you can use all that and think, well, I'm not made for much. Mm, mm. Um, and it's very easy to fall into that, but is is really not the case. You know, that, that part of my life was me just learning to tie my shoelaces. Yeah. And it just so happened tying shoelaces didn't come naturally to me. <laughs> and you know, it's something that I've learned since, and I've been I've since been able to you know, learn to walk, run, sprint, um, run a marathon and, and whatever, all, you know, being metaphors to, you know, mm. what I'm doing in business. Mm. But, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's bizarre really to think about it looking back, but yeah. also something that we know can be potentially quite inspirational for people that are in that spot right now, yeah, whether yeah, that yeah. is in school or a workplace. Yeah. Well, what we both have understood is we haven't come from a background of anything to do with business. 
and Jonah including myself and I'm sure you can definitely agree with this I did not know one business owner let well actual business owner not self-employed person yeah. an actual business owner who was a business owner yet six like without even being successful I didn't know any successful person mm. and it takes for me personally my opinion is if you want to get around them people and the biggest thing is who you spend your time with who you spend your time with is who you become so yeah. if you can get yourself around people who have a, a hunger for knowledge a hunger for success a hunger for fitness a hunger for health you're going to eventually be whether or not you want to you're going to be dragged along with them yeah so for me it was about who do i need to become in order to get around them people and for me to get around them people was i needed to read the books and again me and jonah we both said this earlier we could barely read <laughs> it yeah. took me a very long time to read my first book but i said to myself and i and this is what i say to people because i study a lot now and my thing is i could say i'm the worst at studying and i'm probably not the best at studying yeah. and i hated it and never I, I remember when i used to study at school the only way i i would be able to study with my friends we'd be on the trampoline jumping with books just yeah. to keep our brains yeah. a bit a bit distracted so that we can understand the knowledge and it, that's cool yeah, that's, yeah that's oh, hack right that, is, that is exactly how i do all my nlp <laughs> studying <laughs> um and it doesn't matter where you come from, what matters is where you want to go. Because yeah. if you look at, on a, on a, let's say a monetary term, a lot of billionaires come from zero to billions. Mm. There's not really many that go from a wealthy family and then create billions. Other than people like Kylie Jenner, but they're, they're, yeah. there are the, the one-offs, but the majority of billionaires do come from nothing. So it just goes to show you, if it's been done before, it can be done again. And there's yeah. no, there's no, if you talk to successful people, and again, I talk to successful people, I'm not coming from, this is me, my success. I'm success in, in here, maybe not externally. But I understand the power of just being yourself, yeah. doing what you want to do. And I, I believe in finding purpose, and that doesn't have to be a spiritual thing. Purpose could be business, and I, yeah. I'm assuming that's similar for you. Absolutely, yeah. I was, I was reading, just to follow on from one of your points just there, but I was reading a book called The Values Factor. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of it, have you? I've, I've heard of it, I've yeah. read it. Really, really, really good book. I've not finished it, but essentially the whole premise of the book is that people will essentially always want what they don't have or they'll strive towards a thing that they've always kind of been deprived of. Mm. And um, the so people will, the values that people have, so for example, one of my values, one of the things that I v value very, very highly is eventually become, uh, getting to a place of success in business. Mm. Not because I want loads of money or because I want lots of you know, fame and fortune, but because um, for me, I would, you know, I really, really am passionate about using that as a platform to then yeah. reach other people yeah, and yeah, inspire yeah. other people and teach people and just help other people out. So if I've built something and like, you know, really the proof is in the pudding is my sort of um, mentality. You know, if I can make a really cool pudding, other people who want to eat it, you know? <laughs> and again, that's just like a metaphor, you know, if I can build a, a successful business, I can then help other people and say, look, this thing is possible, I've done it, this is my story, mm. let's talk about how you can do the same thing, or a similar thing. And so the values factor is essentially talking about how people value the things that they've kind of been deprived of, or yeah. never had, or um, yeah. that sort of stuff. And so for me, not coming from a business background, uh, and my family never being particularly wealthy, and um, all this sort of stuff has internally and subconsciously driven me towards wanting yeah. to achieve those things. Yeah, definitely. Um, whereas if you're in a position where you have those things, you know, if you come from a particularly wealthy family, you might not think much of wealth mm. or getting mm. lots of money because mm. it's something that has kind of you've always had, if that makes sense. Um, where you might be more drawn towards something a bit more creative or yeah. abstract or something that, you know, if your family make a lot of money in the corporate world, you might want to stray away from that and, you know, go work at mm. like Disneyland or, you know, yeah, something exactly. along those lines. And so it's, it's very much talking about that, which is a very interesting, very interesting book, but the premise of that is yeah. very valuable by itself. Yeah, definitely. And because I always believe your message, your message and what you've been through, what you've gone through and what you essentially grow through and become mm. a different person. That's what I use to help people. And obviously yourself is, I'm sure in the future, when it gets to a stage of you, you'd see a young kid starting out in business, yeah. you'd be like, I know where you are. Yeah. I want to help you. Yeah. And absolutely. that's what, like what you've been through and essentially what you've, what you've done yourself. You love to see people doing that. You you love seeing people that are, for example, if, if you're if you start a business at a young age, yeah, and there was there was and you were let's say 40, 50 years old and you saw an 18 year old guy starting a business, you'd be like, I know exactly where he is and I want to help him because I didn't have that opportunity. And that's where I think 
that's yeah. the that's the giving back that's the fulfillment side of it and yeah, absolutely and definitely in business like i know this and i'm sure you know this as well is money can't buy you happiness and that's no. very true yeah money can buy there's a certain level of wealth and i believe from the studies that i've read about 70k a year whether that's dollars pounds yeah. whatever it is yeah. um is the tipping point for that that's just like the level of you can't really get any happier yeah. Because a supercar's from, not going to make you happier. Yeah. yeah, a supercar's not going to make you happier. A Louis, Louis Vuitton bag's not going to make you happier. <laughs> a new phone's not going to make you happier. The instant yeah. gratification's there, but the long-term happiness has to come within you doing something that you enjoy every day. And obviously, yeah, absolutely for yourself, business is something mm. that you enjoy doing every day. And yeah, that's absolutely. Why you do it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm I'm extremely passionate about business, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. You know, the businesses that I run, but also you know helping other people run the businesses that they're passionate about as well. And that's something that money aside is something that i am simply just fulfilled by yeah and i'm satisfied by you know doing these things it's it's not really about finance obviously a big part of business is making yeah, money definitely, like, definitely. and for businesses that making money it's a charity and funny enough charity is also something i'm quite interested in but um you know that's that's something that i'm passionate about doing potentially some point in the future mm. you're not going to build a successful business in my opinion doing something that you're not actually passionate about yeah because Agreed. internally you won't have the inbuilt drive to commit enough to it to actually mm. make it mm. it's, 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 it's like Steve Jobs he said if, if you if you don't generally enjoy it because you're gonna inevitably fail and I, I was saying about this on my Instagram the other day life is both yin and yang there's yeah. the good side of life there's the there's the making the money there's the having the success there's the enjoying the business yeah but there will be inevitably there will be failures like for example myself I've tried over nine nine or ten different businesses that have all failed mm. yeah and then like yourself your first business you knew you were passionate about it and it yep. start and it worked for you but again it didn't just happen overnight it's been a process of how long i mean it's close to 4 years now yeah so yep. a process of 4 years and if you don't enjoy that you can't do something for 4 years think think about You'd how go insane. yeah oh You'd you go would insane. Yeah. it's it's like if you if you truly do not like school which neither of us did <laughs> getting out of like a lot of people i've i've spoken to have said oh, i'd love to go back to school that is my worst nightmare. I'd absolutely hate that. Yeah. I'd hate that. Yeah. Because I'm not a I'm not the type of person and neither is Jonah to sit in a classroom and follow instructions. And that sort of uh, like deplayed or came into my life when I started getting bosses and every single one of my bosses I had was just angry, aggressive. So for me that just kicked me even further away from staying in order to people and that, that's yeah. what pushed me away from it. Yeah. Um what would you say was the biggest thing that sort of pushed you into entrepreneurship? It's something that I had always felt somewhat drawn towards mm. anyway, on only a very small scale. Yeah. Um, there's, I actually found a video recently, or rather my mum found a video recently of me uh, as a kid uh, setting up my own little shop, like in the, in the lounge at uh, home, <laughs> in the house we lived in at the time. And I was trying to sell things to my mum, who, was, who was, he wasn't buying into it at all. Instead, she was filming me, which is why there's the video. But I've, I've, so you weren't a good salesman? No, not <laughs> I'm still working on it. <laughs> still working on it. Um, but I've always had it sort of built into me to an extent, which I think is potentially true for a lot of people whether they realize it or not, because it wasn't until much, much later in life where I really started to think of that as like a, a serious option or a serious mm. thing that I might mm. you know, want to pursue. And so it was, it was when I was in the midst of secondary school when I was facing all these frustrations that ultimately led me to getting kicked out. Um, th those frustrations led me to rebel and mess around and class clown and wind up my teachers and ultimately they, they um, decided they would um, not have me around anymore and they, they removed me from the system but yes anyway um, so it wasn't until that point where I was facing all these frustrations and I was wanting something else there's a saying where it's like you don't know what you want to do truly until you spend so much time doing something you hate or yeah. you don't want to do yeah yeah and so for me that, that was that and I was in school and I knew I absolutely did not want to be there and instead I would spend time thinking about what I'd rather be doing instead and for me what came back to the surface then was the idea of running a business now mm. I, I had no idea what that business would actually be at the time but i was thinking man imagine just being out and free and not having yeah. teachers breathing down <laughs> your neck and chasing you imagine not having a boss running after you needing you know needing to needing you to have completed a certain amount of work mm. or done this mm. and done that imagine just being out being free 
building something, doing something that you're passionate about. Imagine how amazing that would be. Mm. And of course, that for me translates itself into business and entrepreneurship. And I would start thinking about potential business ideas and you know what what is it that I could do? What mm. what what mm. could I what could I start now? What could I start in the next year? You know what what can I see myself doing in ten years time? And you know that that really got me excited. As it still does now. And it, for for me, that was around the ages of. 14, 15 years yeah. old. So you've never had a proper job? <clears throat> never had a proper job. And it's gotten further than most people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I never had a proper job. I had, I've done a very, I've done like two very brief stints at what would be potentially a proper yeah. job-ish. Um, I, I worked in the gym as a cleaner for like two weeks. And I also worked in a sandwich shop for probably a month and that was it and <laughs> and yeah it, it really just goes to show you that you don't need and you you, you don't even need to know what you want to do no, my, I, my I not. yeah my biggest thing what i say to people is and this is what i've heard from a lot of people as well is just try everything yeah. like especially if oh, you're yeah. young let alone like whatever age you are try it because you don't mm. know unless you try and the worst thing you can feel is regret imagine like just picture this now getting to the age of 85 90 you're on your deathbed and you just think back to oh i should have just asked out that girl i should have just just started that business i should have just traveled the world crazy how yeah. painful would that be if you didn't do that and a, gr a big thing is a lot of sacrifice needs to come and it's sort of like up front like i imagine you sacrificed quite a yeah. lot at the start yeah. um I know myself, these past three years have been very lonely for me, but that's what I needed in order to get where I need to be. Yeah. Um, I need the time on my own to meditate. I need the time on my own to, to study. I need the time on my own to sit and figure out what I need to do. Um, but then on the plus side, on the flip side is it can't be done alone. And you yeah. know that yourself, you know, I've got people working for you. Yeah. Um, well, but, with me. Yeah, with you. <laughs> um, but essentially you've got to start somewhere. You're not going to start off with a 50 people, 50 person company. No. You're not going to start off with a million followers. No. You start off at zero. You start yeah. off with zero pounds. You start off with zero customers, zero clients. And over time, like, like Jonah said, because I'm still in my, the business that I'm running now, I'm further behind Jonah. But that's part, this part of the journey. And I'm in that, that space right now where I, I am having fluctuations like that. Mm. Whereas when you start to establish yourself, you start to become a lot more of a, a known in the field, an authority figure in the field. Yeah, for sure. And it's something that doesn't doesn't come naturally. Like for me, I said it's been close to four years now mm, since I've been mm. doing my thing and it's been a long old four years and he said it's been a lot of sacrifice, not just from me personally, um, because for example, like I was straight out of school, I didn't have a job. Yeah. Um, so it's not like I left my well-paying job to do <laughs> yeah, something yeah, that yeah, didn't yeah. pay me anything anymore. It's like I never had a job in the first place. And so for me, the thing that I was sacrificing was everything that everything else that I could be doing instead, mm. rather than the things I already had. I sacrificed those things to then do nothing. It was, you know, I was a 15-year-old, 16-year-old when I started the business. Yeah. And a lot of other 16-year-olds were going out getting jobs, even if it was just a Saturday job. Yeah, yeah. They were getting a paycheck. They were getting paid. They were making money. They were going out and doing things with friends. They were going. Mm out to eat they're going clubbing and drinking and like obviously 16 is slightly underage but you know people do it anyway. still happens it still happens unfortunately well yeah <laughs> it's um, part of life it is but you know people are going out and having a social life and that i n i never really had that stuff mm. like in my life because i and i mean not to say it wasn't all to do with not having a job because i could have still you know, yeah gone out and done yeah, things yeah, but i was dedicating not just the, I was committing not just the money that I could be making but wasn't, but also my time, my attention and my mm. um, effort into pursuing a business. Mm. Rather than going out on the weekends, I would stay in on my own mm -hmm. and treat it as the same as every single other day that I lived. Yeah. Monday yeah. was the same as Saturday. Yeah. And I'd be working regardless. I'd be looking to build mm -hmm. my business regardless mm -hmm. of what day of the week it was, regardless of what my friends were doing, um, regardless of whether or not I made any money. And it just means that you keep sort of chipping away at the old block, so yeah. to speak. And eventually you get to a point where you've got, uh, you've carved out, carved out like a, a nice looking statue. Where you've, yeah. You know, you've built, yeah, built a business. Yeah, that's it. That's um, it. And it's one of those things that also will never really come to an end, I don't think. Yeah. Um, if, 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 you, if you can see, like my opinion, if you are looking to work to then retire, hmm. why do you do what you do? Because again, I speak to people and we were talking about this earlier. Yeah. I speak to a lot of people and I say, I say, 
do you enjoy what you do? And their answer usually is, no, it just pays the bills. Some yeah. people, they, they love it, and I'm like, perfect. Like, no matter what you do, whether you're a cleaner, if you generally enjoy it, then yeah. stick at it. Yeah. If it's not for you, then, and you have to figure something else out, then you may have to stay there in order to pay the bills, you may have to stay there in order to just yeah. keep yourself living. You need to be sensible. Yeah, you do need to be sensible. Like, and again, I'm sort of, was in a similar boat to Jonah. I've never had, a uh, a real job constantly yeah my longest one was building that was for my parents yeah um, then I went to marketing for a couple of weeks or a couple of months and I quit because I just couldn't stand the boss um, I've had I've had many bosses that are, again very aggressive very angry mm -hmm. so I struggled to stay yeah. in them positions yeah so I again went from having nothing to having nothing but trying to build a business yeah so I I'm quite blessed for that but that doesn't mean to say if you're watching this video and you're 40 years old and you've got a job that you've been at for 20 years yeah. that you can't start something and yeah. we've all got like a lot of the thing is a lot of people say I don't have time to be consistent now consistent doesn't mean producing 50 pieces of content for Instagram 50 pieces for YouTube 50 pieces for Twitter uh, while running a business while reaching out to clients that's not that's not sustainable let alone consistent yeah. I mean that's the sort of thing you you may build yourself up to over time yeah definitely Gary V for example we yeah. both follow Gary yeah. V people watching may also follow, follow Gary V he produces a very high volume of content mm. but that guy has been build, building his thing for the last couple of years yeah so, yeah, the so last, yeah the last number of decades yeah and so he's at that place now, but he also has a full team of people behind him helping him produce that level of content. And it's not something that would be sustainable even for Gary Vee to do on his mm, own. Mm, and mm. so for a lot of people starting, you will be on your own. And that's fine. I was... You know, I still am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's, that's, that's the best place to start. And uh, so looking at other people's success isn't always the... I mean, it's inspiring, but it's not necessarily the thing you should be looking at when you're yeah, starting. Definitely, which is definitely. why we're doing this video because we want to emphasize that people do start from literally nothing. Yeah, and they start from you know bad circumstances, bad situations. I was kicked out of school. It'd be very easy for me to think again, like I'm not made for much, mm. and you know probably I'm, I'm never going to be successful. I might have these aspirations, but if I can't even finish school, yeah, yeah. So I was I was really thinking like how if I've if I've been kicked out of school with no grades I've got two GCSEs then how can I possibly make a business that's in any way successful it's, it's just not in me like I, if I can't finish school like everyone finishes school like all of my classmates mm. did much better than I did mm. and so it's easy in that situation to think well all of these people are naturally just going to go further than I am and mm. I have the ambition I've got the, the idea of running a business but it's just not a feasible option because yeah. I, I can't even scrape my way to the end of school yeah um, Which in, in the long term of it looks very easy compared to the outside world. Yeah, like everyone goes through school, everyone sits the same exams, mm. everyone has the same lessons. Um, and if I can't even get myself through that, where it's literally an even playing field, mm. pretty much, like it's given to you on a plate. Yeah, yeah. If I can't even get through that, then what chance do I have running a business? Yeah. And it's very easy to fall into that way of thinking. But at the same time, if you make a conscious decision, in your mind and it really is a it is a decision mm, it's, like, it, it's not a decision you make like right now necessarily but it's a decision that maybe is made over a period of time as well um but once you make that decision to to make something of yourself and to yeah. do something and to build something and pursue something that's when you notice things really changing and you're like ah cool yeah. this is this, this is, is where, where i my, yeah, life, yeah this, life can go the way that i want it to be yeah this is where i can take control again of, of my own life and for me especially, I felt very much out of control in school. Just need to go up. Nice. <laughs> so I felt very out of control in school um, because I was falling behind. I was in detentions every day. I was in isolation every day. I was always having um, my parents called in for meetings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, most weeks my parents would be in with meeting with one of my teachers about something, and uh, you know, meeting with the head of year and the head teacher. Like it was, it was non-stop for years. Mm -hmm. Like good mm -hmm. two or three years, I was. Um, you know the tail end of secondary school, and it was it was ridiculous. Like looking back at it, it was it was mental. Like it was it was literally nonstop. And for me, I already had that inbuilt drive to one day be running my business, and that's what I latched onto. Yeah, and I think that really is the key thing that prevented me from getting sucked too far into a negative mindset towards myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I always felt that regardless of everything else, I can um, and I will actually I will. Mm. 
still leave this place and I will pursue my own thing. Mm, mm. And that is exactly what I've been doing ever since. Yeah. And um, you, you know, you might think, well, what if I don't have that inner voice that's, yeah. that is so confident? Yeah. And, like you. That's that's something that you've got to develop. And that, yeah. again, that doesn't happen over time. Again, like like a, a, a lot of people that listen to me, not everyone um, has heard my story of. I was a severely anxious person. I hated conversations. I literally hated conversations. Yeah. I'd speak. The only person I would speak to on the phone was my mum because I just hated conversations. Um, and that's why I started taking drugs because it would take that anxiety away. It would take it would give me more mm. confidence. Yeah, which I think is common for a lot of people as well. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Because I know from experience, drugs. Are, well, some some completely tear you down. Some take you up to a highest of confidence, and it really mm. is a high. And that really temporarily. yeah temporarily so that night i would be the confident person the next day i'd sit in my room eating pizza all day because i didn't want to do anything i was Fe- unhappy feeling low yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and the biggest thing that i want absolutely everyone to understand doesn't matter what like we said at the start it doesn't matter where you start doesn't matter what you do it just matters that you do start and you mm. don't like we said we don't you don't have to be the best to start you have to start to be the best eventually and eventually yeah. you will be the best if you're consistent and that just comes from mindset yeah. Now, I, I can imagine when you started, if you look back at what you do today, when you first started, you probably thought, I thought I was working hard. But mm-hmm. looking at what I was doing was either, yeah. I was probably procrastinating too much, I probably wasn't even doing what I needed to do. What I was doing probably wasn't even to a, uh, the highest quality that, well, it was to my highest quality then, but obviously yes, every course, day yeah. you're growing, you're developing, and you're yeah. changing into the person you need to become in order to produce the results that you want in life. Yeah, it's, it's very much an ongoing thing and it starts, I always say to people that are starting in business, or even clients we work with through the marketing company, because we work with um, some clients that are starting their own business as well. Okay. Um, and so what, what I'll often say is like, think, don't think about how big you can start. Don't think about like, you know, through the marketing company specifically as an example, if we're working with a client, a lot of people will think like, oh cool, like what's the biggest, most extravagant website I can afford? What's the mm. fanciest video stuff that we can produce? What's the best logo I can have? Instead of thinking like that, think about actually how small can I start? Like what is the smallest viable amount of something that I can start with right mm. now? Mm. Because if you set yourself goals that are, I mean, big goals are great and big goals is what will drive people to keep going in the yeah, long definitely, run. Definitely. But in, in the immediate short term, where the only priority is starting something, Think about what is the smallest viable thing that I can do right now to start. Yeah. And and do that. And you know that you know surely there'll be um, very little doubt as to whether or not you can do it. It's just a question of mm. like, can I conjure up enough, you know, conscious energy to actually go out there and yeah. and do that thing today, right yeah. now, in the next fifteen minutes or the next hour or yeah. by this afternoon. And uh, what can I do? Yeah, because what I use, I, I use a term called progressive extremism, and this is what I use when I coach people. Mm. And I say, if you have never been to the gym in your life, it's not sustainable, let alone like whether you want to do it, it's not sustainable for you to go to the gym twice a day for two hours each time, only drink protein shakes and only eat salads. That's just not sustainable. Whereas now that's pretty much not only eat salads, I still eat a lot of other food, but I go to the gym seven days a week. um, I have protein shakes every day. So for me, it took time and everything takes time. Yeah. And it is the snowball effect, especially, especially with is. business, yeah. it, with, with absolutely anything. When you start, you always start small and it's okay to start small. Like you said, it's starting with something that is feasible for you to do. So whether it is you want to start out in business, first of all, you probably don't know what business you want to start in. Mm-hmm. So what would be the most logical thing is research businesses or research the people that you're most inspired by. What about them inspires you? Is it the specific type of business? Because business doesn't have to be always in the, because you're, I'd say you're more in the corporate world. Yeah, um, I mean, a lot of, yeah, a lot of the clients we work with and an increasing number of much larger clients mm. now, we go to the like head offices and the yeah. marketing team yeah, yeah, and the yeah. CEOs and all that sort of stuff, which is really cool. And if I rewind three years, that would like not be on my radar yeah. at all. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, it's more and more becoming slightly more corporate in a way mm, um, mm. not completely but yes yeah, yeah. absolutely to an extent because there's even even myself like content wise I'm I, I, I always analyse what I'm doing and if I'm not getting the results that I want to be getting in a, a fair I'll give myself a fair enough time period and for example on YouTube my content clearly wasn't getting 
bearing in mind how many videos I was posting, how consistently I was posting, I wasn't getting the return of time spent. So for me, it was to go back and see what do I need to do in order to get the attention from people. Yeah. And now I do a completely different style of content on TikTok, and that was TikTok, sort of how yeah. we reconnected. Yeah. Um, and it is completely different to what I do. It is literally me making vegan food now. One, I'm vegan, so that's one of the reasons. Yep. Um, I don't know how I even thought of it. I think <laughs> it, it was a random thought. I was making something chocolate, some vegan chocolate mix, and it got loads of views. So I was like, this might work. And I still can put my message into it. And you can always put your message into something. Mm. It's just willing to try something new. And I could have said, no, I, I'm not a chef. And I'm not a chef. I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to go in that route. It's just not me. Yeah. But I've said to myself, What's the worst that can happen? Worst case scenario, yeah. I come back to where I am and I will still be where I am. I'm not going to lose credibility because I've tried different styles of content and it's not possible. No. Um, and also in business, sometimes, like myself, I had to try all these different ones. None of them worked. And even one that started to work, so this is how we first connected was we both, uh, this is when I was starting off in uh, my social media marketing journey and stuff yeah. like that. And that's how we first connected. Um, by my business partner, he sort of got in contact with Jonah and then we yep. um, became friends. And that was when I realized, I was like, I don't enjoy that personally. And that doesn't mean it's a bad business model because it's clearly working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it no, just didn't sure. work for me. Yeah. So that's where I've, I've sort of come to the self-awareness and that's what you've got to do. You've got to be self-aware to say, I want to run a business. Maybe it's not marketing. Maybe it is, for example, YouTube. Realistically, YouTube can be a business. You can make it into a business. Personal um, brand. Yeah, personal branding. That's that's a business. You can. There, there's so there's there's so many different businesses out there. I couldn't physically give you an idea because <laughs> we're all different. Yeah, and it it really is again about finding something that you're passionate about mm. because. For example, you dabbled in the marketing world, mm -hmm. similar to what I'm doing now. Yeah. Not something you stuck with. Mm -hmm. Not because it didn't work, not because it wouldn't work or it couldn't work, but because internally you just simply didn't have the yeah. drive or the passion um, for that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas I perhaps do. Yeah. yeah Whereas definitely. I don't have the drive and the passion for other types of businesses mm. that other people are running and doing really, really well with. Mm. And so it's unlikely, not that I couldn't, or not that I wouldn't, or not yeah. that. Um, it would just, you would get up and you wouldn't be excited to start your day. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's, it's very much the same thing as well about working at a regular job as well, mm. I suppose. Is, you know, there's lots of people doing very, very, very well, living very happy and fulfilled lives working a regular job, but it's not something that I personally yeah. have got any passion towards. Yeah, definitely. And so it's unlikely that I'll ever do it yeah. um, to well, quite the same extent. Yeah, because some people... You can look at the happiest people, and again, this is not—it's not measured on success. It's not measured on monetary forms. For me uh, personally, happiness comes from a, f a form of giving. So that—that yeah. that could be giving to your local charity, giving to your family, yeah. giving to your friends. Uh, that could just be time. That could be energy. It doesn't have to be monetary. Yeah. Um, and also growing as well, learning something new every and day. Progressing. Yeah, progressing. Because at the end of the day, on the scale of things, the world, regardless of what you say, the world is always going up. Yep. No matter how fast it is, at the minute it's on quite a steep incline. And if we're not progressing, let's say for example a marketing company, or what's a great example, Toys R Us. Yeah. They refuse to go digital with their marketing. And look what happened, they went bust. Thomas because, Cook as well. Yeah, Thomas Cook. Very, very recently Thomas Cook yeah. went down. I was, at, I was actually in the sky <laughs> on a Thomas Cook plane. Well, when they went down? When they went down. <laughs> And that's a, that's a funny, that was when I went to Turkey recently. And, um, you know, it was, and there was, you know, the, the days leading up to that and the weeks leading up to that, there was talk about it being on the edge and it, mm. you know, it's reliant on certain meetings and investors to keep it afloat. And ultimately it went down. We got stranded in Turkey for a little bit and figured it itself out and it was all fine. But ultimately it wasn't until after, I was looking into like, why did it go down? What are some of the key mm. reasons that people have identified as to why this massive company has just gone bust? Mm. And um, a lot of it, if you look into it, I mean, you, you can read about it online, but um, a lot of it, there's just a lot of people talking about how they fail to keep up with just current trends of yeah. online and yeah. um, all, all that sort of stuff. Like the specifics I've not, um, you know, totally clued up on, but I just got the general gist that essentially they fail to keep up. Yeah, with, with the times. Yeah, with with uh, the modern the modern mm. day and technology mm. and online and marketing. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like if you if you looked at a marketing company now, yeah. and say say for example you went into a business and you said, uh, l let's do your marketing, which I can still imagine that was still a thing before yeah. sort of social media marketing yeah. agencies yeah, came around. Yeah, yeah, of course. 
and you walked in and you went, right, so we'll do some flyers, uh, we'll put you in some magazines. Yeah. They'd probably look at you and be like, a, 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 a company that sort of has their, their head screwed on and mm. knows where they're going. They'd look at you and be like, well, why would we do that? Why would we waste our yeah. money when for advertising online, it's actually cheaper. It's just a getting, cheaper, the, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a lot cheaper and and you can measure more, it. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, there's there's endless benefits to you know online marketing, mm. and I think the the main point really is like why would you go like do flyers if there's, yeah. if there's this yeah. and essentially I think if you're not and again there's another saying it's like if you're not growing essentially you're dying. Yeah, um, it's not if you're not growing it's not that you're just not going anywhere like you're actually dying mm, like mm. not. I mean, we're all dying if we want to get really deep. Like, <laughs> but like, if you're not, if you're not, you know, actively progressing, you're actually regressing. Yeah. And well, it's, it's it's that scale again. The world's yeah. going up. So if you're going on a straight line and you're not progressing, you're yeah. not physically actually going down. But in comparison, you yeah. are going down to the to the rest of the world because the world's always moving forward. Yeah, you're you're just getting left behind. Yeah. And um, you, it is up to you to make a real conscious effort to um, to progress yourself and. Mm. Uh, that, don't think about progressing in terms of I have to be the best. Yeah, I just in have to be world. better than yesterday. I have to be better than myself yesterday. Don't worry about me being better than Max or mm. Max being better than me. It's not progressing in that sense. It's not like a competitive thing. Yeah, I don't think like either of us really care about no. where I'm at compared to you or where you're at compared to me. We're in it to help each other out. Yeah, and you know because we're good friends and you know there's. There's there's not much apart, you know, apart from things like this video there's not much real crossover with the things no, we're doing but no. we can still help each other yeah or well, even when we were doing the marketing like yeah. essentially we were competitors because yeah. like in a sense yeah, yeah. But, I was, but I was still more than happy to yeah. you know help out Max yeah and um, you know it's happy days but don't so again don't think about progressing in terms of like I have to be the best yeah. or I have to beat other people or there's loads of competition out there yeah. or there's other people running the same kind of business I might want to run mm. just progress yourself internally yeah. whether that's your business or whether that's reading 10 pages of a book a day whether that's listening to some more podcasts whether that's auditing the people that you follow on social media and getting rid of anyone that's sort of toxic or negative or isn't adding to your mm. life in any mm. sort of way and then follow accounts and people that are and just like make conscious changes in your life yeah. that when you would look at those things and add them all together is actually making a real over a long term is actually making a real positive impact yeah. and you know changing the direction you end up going yeah. in and it's all very conscious decisions that anyone literally anyone can make mm. oh, 100% and uh, it's, that's the sort of stuff that will change the direction yeah. of your life completely I, this is sort of like a final thought I mean we'll, we'll, we'll end it here in a minute um, my, my last thing I want to say is there's room at the top for everyone but not everyone's willing to do what the, yeah. the top do yeah. and if you want to be the 1% even if you want to be the 5% or even the 10% of people that, that maybe earn or the 10% of people that are the happiest in the world yeah. you have to be willing to do what they did in order to get there and, and understand it's a journey. It's not yeah. like doing what they do today, thinking it'll immediately qualify yeah. you to yes, yeah. be sat next to them. Yeah. Um, but understanding it's a journey and mm. it's a personal journey as yeah. well. It's not like, hey, what exactly was Dwayne The Rock Johnson doing <laughs> when he was my age? Yeah. I'm going to start there right now and follow his exact footsteps. Because mm. it's mm. You know, not going to happen that way. But understanding it's a journey, looking at what they do now, looking at what they've achieved, but understanding the journey that they've been on, mm. looking at the journeys of multiple people and looking at like, okay, what are the common factors here? Like what, um, what are the key things that they've learned? What are the key things that they share? Yeah. Um, what are the key um, mistakes that they've made even? Yeah. And how can I apply that to my life? Well, that, that's a huge benefit is the fact of social media. And that's why I like to record my journey is so that in 10 years time, I can look back and go, m maybe I'll be saying I was quite naive back then. Mm. And what I'm saying, I may not agree with fully, a lot of the stuff I will agree with in, in terms of being consistent, that one thing that I don't think you can ever get around, yeah. being grateful, like you said, having manners, being kind, yeah. spreading love, spreading positivity. At the end of the day, that, that will always be in my ethos. That would always be something yeah. that I will always do. And I can utilize that for good and I, I will utilize it for good. But looking back at who I was is powerful because it shows people watching this in 10 years time, they can go, wow, he really did start with nothing. Mm -hmm. And that, that's yeah. where, like we were talking about earlier about documenting the journey. Um, it doesn't physically have to mean you document your whole life, yeah. but you can look back and see yourself because we have the power to now. We have cameras where we can store this information on a platform for the rest of our life. Yeah. So when I'm 70 years old, I can look Crazy. at myself when I'm 22 and say, 
I'm glad I did that. And yeah. and now you can see the results that come from it because obviously the huge successes now didn't have the, the luxury that we have, which is this. Yeah. So we can like outright prove it that it works. And that that's what I, I truly believe the power of social media is. And if you're if if at the end of the day, if you've got a message that is going to help help people, um, inspire people, impact people, help people change their life, help businesses, mm. then long term you're gonna win. Yeah. And yeah. as long as you're not the person that's there to take, to be greedy, again, long term you're gonna win. Um, because initially greed can win. Like if, if you were greedy, you could go in.